Hi there. Today we're going to reassemble a tensioner on a 201-2 made by Singer. Um, this is pretty similar to a lot of the other uh, tensioners that are out there. And there are a lot of blogs I noticed on uh, how to do this. But sometimes I run into people who would much rather see it done um, live. I guess that's probably the best way to say it. Now, what I'm doing is I'm actually doing an in-place rebuild of the tensioner. And the reason that I'm doing that is that the tension spring that I have uh, for this, which is usually the main reason that you end up having to take the whole tensioner out, the tension spring that I have is actually more than willing to come off of the post without having to disassemble the post. So this is the tension spring that I'm talking about. Um, you'll notice that on the back side of it, there's a little hook. And then on the front side of it, you have a curled piece. What we're going to do is we're going to put that on and we're going to put it on in such a way that it hangs down at about six o'clock. What I usually do is I just give it a little wiggle until it wants to slide further on. So if your tension spring is willing to do that, then you can set up using this process. Okay, so for right now, I'm going to take that off. And you'll notice that yes, it wants to uncoil, but just a little wiggle tends to pull it apart and you should be good. Now, the reason I took that off is that first, we have a few other pieces to put on. This piece here goes on here, and for some reason, every time I do one of these, I wanna put this on backwards, but the V shape goes towards the back of the machine. So I'm gonna put this here. And if you don't know exactly where yours was seated before, say, or maybe it was all, um, half disassembled or something when you got the machine. Sometimes you can tell you can tell by the marks here where the uh, where it used to sit. In my case it looks like it's sat in pretty much every position under the sun. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start this screw at roughly um, when I actually tighten it. I'm going to start it at roughly the center and that's just going to give me some room to be able to adjust it back and forth. Let's see if I can Sorry about all the dust around here. It's spring. It seems to be uh, that time of year for us. All right, so now that's put in there. Now, what that usually does is it usually puts this little ledge guy here at about nine o'clock. I kind of like that. Uh, you'll notice that it's maybe just a smidge off over to the right rather than right dead center. Seems to be where most of mine end up falling. Now, next part is we're going to take that spring and the large coil piece of it is going to go inward. So what we want to do is we want to assemble the next three pieces together. The next three pieces are your two tension discs and you want to make sure that these are dishes together. Okay. If you put them nested like this, you're not going to get the correct tension. If you put them like this, you're definitely not going to get the right tension. You're probably not going to be able to get your thread in there very easily either. They should be bottoms together. So you should see an actual V shape when they're set together. Then you're just going to slide this piece over top of it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to slide this over top. So you've basically got a sandwich now of your spring, your two tension discs, and then this pressure disc on top of it. And we're going to slide this over top of here. Again, wanting to make sure that that spring is pushing downward at about the six o'clock position and we're just going to wiggle. Just wiggle, wiggle until everything kind of sits nice and flush. So this is actually most of your tensioner already assembled, believe it or not. We're going to take this piece here, which is our plus minus that tells us where we want to be. This has to straddle this, this uh, pin here. And we usually want this pin to be pretty much straight up and down. It looks like mine might be a smidgen off, but it's really not a big deal. We're going to straddle that, and we want to make sure that our plus and our minus sign are at the top so that we can see them. Next, we're going to put our beehive spring on. And our beehive spring looks like this. And we want to put this part here, the, basically the top spring piece, facing downward. So we'll put that guy in there. The next piece is what I call the finger. <laughs> Um, the finger here also has to fit inside this post and the way that most of the ones that I take apart look is that this finger points towards you. So we're going to put that finger on there and the finger goes up. The finger goes up 
and the beehive spring has its thickest part down. And the reason that happens is they nest fairly nicely that way. All right, a little more light here. Now, we have two more pieces to put on and we've reassembled our tensioner. The next is our number dial. And what I usually do with this one, because if you look inside there, you can see that pin. We want to make sure that that sits on the right side of the finger so that we can actually turn the dial. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that that finger is to the right. That way, when I turn, I'll be able to turn the dial all the way. If I put it on the other side, then it means that I'm starting way, way too tight as far as my tension. So now I'm just going to hold these here so that everything doesn't spring apart and hit the camera. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly put this knurled knob on. Now this knurled knob I find goes on the easiest if you just keep turning backwards till it feels like it's just sat down flat. And when it does that, it just slides right on quite nicely. Now, this is kind of a spot where typically we usually say you have to kind of fudge it until you get it set just right. I'm going to give you a rule of thumb that will work as a really good starting spot for a lot of machines. It may not be perfect, but at least it's going to give you a ballpark spot without having to really, really fight. What I typically do is I try to spin this knob down a little ways and I'll have to keep pushing this in so that the pin on the knob doesn't keep getting in the doesn't stick into one of the spots. When I get it to the point let's see if we can get you a good view here. When I get it to the point where there you go where the knurled knob and the post are about flush I usually want that at about a two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this to a two. Oops, sorry about that. I'm going to turn this to about a two so that the two lines up with the line up here. And then I'm going to just wiggle this until it falls into place. What that should do now, I'm actually going to put it just a little bit above two. And wiggle until it falls into place. What that should do is that should give me a really good starting point for my tension. In the event that you do some testing, maybe perhaps uh, in relation to the posts that I have on Archaic Arcane in regards to tension, and you find that maybe it's not quite 100% right, you need to adjust it looser or a little bit tighter, there's a really easy way to do this without having to completely readjust the or, uh, disassemble the tension and start again. All you're going to do is you're going to push this number dial in and you're going to turn the knurled knob left or right to adjust it just a little bit. And that'll make it, that, that'll let you make fine adjustments to it. One way to know for sure if your tensioner is adjusted approximately right is you should have the full range of movement all the way from zero to zero, which is really probably a 10. Um, the other thing that will let you know is um, if you're, if at zero, you have the presser lever up, your machine completely threaded, and you pull the thread, and then you put the presser lever down, and you pull the thread, and the thread feels about the same, the pressure on the, on the thread feels about the same, that's about right. That's a really good starting point. By the time you turn it to about a four, somewhere between three and five, typically, but usually four, by the time you hit four, if you've threaded the needle with the thread, and you pull on the thread in the direction that it would normally travel. So for this machine, we thread from right to left. What I would do is I would thread the needle and I would thread, I would, sorry about that, I would thread, um, I would pull the thread from right to left. If I did that, the needle would deflect probably about a sixteenth of an inch. If it deflects about a sixteenth of an inch, somewhere between three and five, that's going to be your normal thread tension just to give you a ballpark idea. Now, the one thing that we haven't done, and you may have noticed that I have forgotten a step, is we haven't adjusted this spring here. What we're going to do is we're going to give a little gentle push over top of this 
screw. And then we're going to give it another gentle shove. There you go, over top of this little ledge. I'm going to adjust the camera one more time. So what that's going to do is that's going to give us some spring, some snap. And what that's doing is when the take-up lever goes up and down, you're going to find, oh, we're going to need a little more height. When the take-up lever goes up and down, when it's down here, you don't want a great big pile of thread hanging down here. This is giving it just a little bit of extra pull to give a little bit of tension on that thread because if there's a whole bunch of thread here, it will mess up your tension a little bit and it'll be a really inconsistent tension, which is very, very difficult to troubleshoot. I guess that's it. If you have any other questions, let me know. Uh, I do enjoy knowing that you guys are reading the blog, that you have questions and whatnot, and thank you for watching this video. We'll talk to you soon.